answer your question about how things work if everybody's an owner, um, you got to think about it like this. What would the economy be like if you owned your house, right? Or if you owned your, your pro any other property, right? Well, what if everybody else did? Well, it works just fine, doesn't it? So let's say that you own a, I don't know, a machine shop or something, for example, and you make parts for a, a large auto manufacturer. Well, you don't have to actually work at the auto manufacturer. You can make parts wherever your shop is. And if you're making parts wherever your shop is, then that means that, you know, it, you know, you work at kind of your own pace, your own schedule, you're your own boss. The idea of moving everybody in kind of in-house and working for one giant company was to bring down and try and have control over costs. And it was because the banks that lent all the money needed a return on their investments, if you understand, or on their loans, I should say. Um, they, you know, they think of it as an investment because they're still you know, lending this money out of nothing and they need to get a return. And banking, the very nature of banking doesn't actually work because it requires that, that there's constant growth. But yeah, if you have a, if you have your own facility and you make stuff, well, then you have your own facility and you make stuff. That's it. So, you know, you can, you can be an owner all you want and as can other people. Um, and then you have direct control over pricing. Now that's good and bad because now you're gonna have competition, which is fine. Um, but that's not, that's not so bad if you have an honest economy or honest economy, or excuse me, honest money. You'll never have an honest economy because an honest economy is not gonna happen. But you can have honest money. You can have accurate weights and measures. If you have accurate weights and measures, and so does everybody else, well, then eventually costs, you know, uh, uh, max out. And so that's how that ends up working. I mean, I hope that makes, uh, hope that makes sense to you, but that's how, how it works if everybody's an owner. And uh, before you say, well, like, well, couldn't the, the big corporations, uh, you know, compete and get rid of everybody? Well, yeah, they get rid of people with more, with a bunch of laws, a bunch of fake laws. Uh, that's how they get rid of a lot of their competition, but they can't really get rid of, they can't outcompete. Uh, again, if you have an honest currency, most giant, you know, the giant mega corporations can't actually exist. They just, they just can't. They don't have the ability to exist in, a, in an environment like that because somebody who's smaller and nimble can go run circles around them. And that's exactly what ended up happening back in the day, which is why you had this, this thing, this, this thing happened where you had somebody who had owned a farm and then he would get offered all this money to go work at some factory. Hey, come work at my factory and I'll pay you $5 a day instead of the $2 a day you're making on your farm. And guys would fall for it, right? They'd go work for these companies. And it works great for a while. As with all, as with all Ponzi schemes, they work great for a while until the promises that they made to all these people have to come due all at one time. And in the U.S., you know, we have something like $220 trillion worth of unfunded liabilities that there's no way to pay any of that, but they're going to continue to keep making all these promises to people. Oh, yeah, go to college, get a degree, and then work for your company. And, like, I mean, that stuff hasn't worked in decades, you know, but they're still telling kids this stuff. They still tell young people this stuff. And... They still fall for it because their parents keep telling them this stuff, you know, or their parents, you know, keep telling them this. So that's what ends up happening. But yeah, if everybody's an owner, it's not that big a thing. They can, you know, people can own their own stuff. They can own their own property and it'll be just fine. It just means that, you know, you're going to have your own competition to deal with as well. They're like, well, but it's less stress to work at a big company. It is. It is less stress. Um, it's also less freedom. You know, it's sort of a may your chains rest lightly type conversation. So, hope that makes sense. Something I forgot to mention on this was that you also, the, the other idea behind having, working at like one company, 
the company benefits from that because then you you only have one customer that company right so i mean think of think of your life like a business i've said this for a long time think of your life like a business you only then have one customer and that's whatever company you work for as opposed to if you're an independent machinist in this example then you could sell parts to many different auto manufacturers right well if you can sell parts to different auto manufacturers then you're not exclusive right so you can make high quality parts for their competitors well that's good for you because let's say you've got i don't know 10 different car companies that you make parts for again in this example well that means if you lose one of them as a customer if they say oh we don't like you anymore and we're not going to buy any any stuff from you well you still have nine other customers whereas if you work for the company and they say we don't like you anymore and they fire you well then that's the end of it does that make sense so it, it's it, it's it's about being able to control you know you you know the machinist again in this example you know but like that's what this is all about so if you understand that's that's the name of the game on this uh, there's no there's no fancy way for me to really answer that and there's not a um uh, a, a, a slick canned answer that I have it's just there's a number of different factors but that's another big one is that you don't have to um, you know if, if the if, if your customer pisses you off or if your customer becomes on un, 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 so let's use an example let's say that you make parts for Ford and Ford pisses you off and they, they, they say hey we're not gonna pay you anymore or whatever okay well then you can say, okay, well, screw you. I don't have, I don't need you any longer. I can sell parts to your competitors, and that's companies hate that. They 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 want vertical integration. They don't like the idea of decentralization. The idea, I mean, like this is where I I've said before on many occasions when I have my 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 commie followers who say things like, you know, they we you know we need to have the means of production controlled by the state, which is ridiculous because the state is just your collective greed and incompetence. I mean that's not gonna work out. Like and they're like, well but my capitalism, like yeah, that's called vertical integration. And you don't want to allow that, actually. I mean like you, you gotta think about it like this. If you're if if you're in business, then you want to be able to diversify your customer base as opposed to have like one customer. If you have one customer, you are in danger. In fact, if any one customer makes up, and I've said this, I mean, you can go back and look at my old videos where I've actually done like the class on this, where I explain that if one customer makes up more than 25% of your business, in fact, actually nowadays, I probably should update that, it's probably closer to 20%. If they make up more than 20% of your volume, you are in danger. You are in great danger of going out of business. Um, especially if they find out that they know that they make up 20% of your business. Then you have the, the sort of the Walmart effect or the Rubbermaid effect. You, you end up with a really terrible situation. Uh, I told a story before a while back where I actually met a, there was a customer, he wasn't a customer of mine, but he was a customer of a customer. And I remember talking with him and, and he was telling me sort of his problem that he, you know, that one of his customers, and it's a big company, if I said the name, you'd know it, and he said something to the effect of like that they made up like like 64% of his business and i'm like oh my god you are so screwed you you are basically a vassal of them because if they decide they they don't they're going to pull the plug on you or they're going they decide hey we want to pay a lower price you are completely hosed and so yeah i mean that's that that's how it works i mean just it's a matter of actually it's just it's a way of thinking it's a way of changing the way that you think about this kind of stuff so uh, anyway, there's, there, there you go.